Hello, and welcome to today's Ninja Trader ecosystem event, Avoiding Traps, Timing is Everything, with Tony Hansen of TonyHanson.com. My name is Thomas, and I'm a platform representative here at Ninja Trader. Now, before we start the webinar, I have a few housekeeping notes. Now, this webinar is presented by Ninja Trader LLC, which is the technology company responsible for developing and supporting the Ninja Trader trading software. Brokerage related questions should be directed to the brokerage team using the phone number or email on the screen. And if you are new to NinjaTrader, please make sure you sign up for your free NinjaTrader demo with real time market data. Our platform is always free for advanced charting, strategy back testing, and trade simulation. You can get your free demo account by following the link on the screen. Now, before I turn the mic over to Tony, it's important to understand that futures foreign currency and options trading contains substantial risk and is not suitable for every investor. It is possible to lose all or more, more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Now, please remember that these trading solicitations are not a citation or recommendation, but simply educational in nature. Thank you again for joining us today. And without further ado, it's my pleasure to welcome to the Ninja Trader webinar room, Tony. Now, I um, am going to be talking today about the topic of avoiding traps. And when I look at the markets, I look at five different things that I call the building blocks of price development when I'm looking at looking at it for a trade to take. And those building blocks are time development, trend development, momentum, volume, and support and resistance levels. Well, when it comes to time development, this is really the one criteria that a lot of traders overlook. It's not something that they typically are taught uh, from early ages in their trading. And it's really probably one of the most important aspects of understanding price action in the market. Because when we're looking at timing in the market, we're looking at the do or die levels where things are most likely to create really strong strategies where if something is setting up too early, it's more likely to create a trap. If something is setting up too late, then you could also run into a huge problem where you could be getting trapped as well. So when we're looking at time development, we're looking at levels in the market that are going to create the highest probability strategies for strong impulse or momentum moves. So what we're trying to avoid are those zones that we call the zone of pain, where you're more likely to just get chopped around in a bunch of muck, and there's not really a good primary direction that has a high probability of following through. So in the category of time development, there's actually six different types of time development that I look at depending upon the strategy that I'm trading. I'm going to go through a couple of those within today's session so that you have a basic understanding of some of what we're looking at and how that can apply to different strategies and whether or not they're going to have a really strong follow through. So what you're seeing here is just the very simple initial type of time development. And that has to do with these levels of congestion or levels of correction that happen coming off of an impulse move. So an impulse move very simply is just a primary directional trend to the market. This is where momentum is typically stronger than average. And those are broken up by these corrective periods. So one of the types of time development that I look for is how long a corrective period takes to form compared to an impulse move. Now, we commonly see impulse moves over and over again that are approximately the same size, last for approximately the same time. On the large, the larger time frames, you're going to find some really big ones. Um, but they also go down and they get broken down into these very common ones as well, where we will see multiple versions over and over and over again of these larger and then the smaller impulse waves. So what we're looking at as far as correction periods go 
when identifying a trade is if we're looking for something like a reversal, for example, we want to see what that impulse move was before we go into a zone of congestion. We see this typically with a head and shoulders pattern. In this case, it's decapitated, but it's this zone of back and forth action relative to previous levels of impulse move. So when we hit a level where, let's say we've been uh, rallying for 15 minutes and we previously saw a correction for about 30 minutes after a 15 minute rally, well, when we see another 15 minute rally again and another 30 minute correction, that zone between 28 to 32 minutes is going to be a pretty good zone to get another impulse move breaking away. So when we're looking at trends as continuation patterns, we look not only at the correction that is forming, but how long that took to form compared to previous corrections. And these zones that are happening at highs where we get back and forth action count as, as well. So we're not just looking at the bull flag or the bear flag levels and how long those took to form, but we're also looking at levels where the market starts to shift momentum and goes into a lot of that choppier back and forth type of type of movement. So what you can see over here is that as it develops once again for about the same amount of time, we have a higher probability of getting a continuation move happening. Now, by itself, this isn't going to help you a great deal. It is one aspect of time development. And when we're looking at taking a trade, we want to look at multiple types of time development and how they work together. We also want to look at how do these periods of correction form? Because we've all seen periods of correction that, you know, you might get a rally of 50 points and it corrects over the course of 30 minutes. And then the next time you see a rally of 50 points, it corrects over the next hour. So when we're looking at those, there's a couple of ways that time development unfolds. In certain cases, we can see them broken in half. So for example, we have very comparable periods of correction happening in here, but this one has the impulse move down. It goes for about that halfway point, pauses again, and goes for another halfway point. When I'm talking about trend development and looking at trends, I typically treat, teach trend development by looking at two waves as opposed to something like Elliott wave theory where they're focusing upon, you know, five or three impulse moves and then two corrective moves so that you have those five waves. But if you're looking at time development, we can easily take something that has this five wave trend development, one, two, three, four, five. And what we can see happening is that our corrective moves can go into more of a sideways focus or a sideways pattern. So you only get one and two primary moves down as opposed to three primary moves. So the time development aspect that deals with these congestion levels or these correction periods, they can be halved so that we can get setups that are happening at the halfway point, or they can be multiplied. So we can end up with, for example, a level of correction where the market's coming down, we get a two wave correction, and it just doesn't get going. And we see it go into another two wave correction so that you essentially get the doubling out of these correction periods. What we see over and over again is very comparable symmetry when we're looking at the highest probability strategies. There's going to be times where your time development doesn't look like a lot of other periods and that's where you need to be more alert you need to realize that hey my risk is going to be higher but if i have zones that have reached those kind of one-to-one -one ratios then i have a higher probability for a stronger momentum move to take place so in this example we see that time correction zone but we see it tilted and again, over here, we see a correction where we've just broken this you know, three wave downtrend. And again, 
a lot of times it can look like this, but in this case, it's just leading to a double tap of the previous low, but it takes the same amount of time as other moves did to correct to impulse moves. So this is just, you know, the very first kind of basic concept of time development. I'm going to show you a couple of more examples here. This emphasizes how we can see those periods where they can go into shorter zones of correction, where it's basically just half of these previous levels. And we even see an example of where it goes and it doubles. So this tries to break a little bit on the early side here, and it doesn't really get going for breakdown. We've actually seen this pattern here uh, in the indices a lot this week. And by not following through on this break with strong momentum, what this means is that the next do or die point for a strong continuation would be for that period to double out. So that becomes our next do or die zone in the market. So we all have set up sometimes where it just doesn't get going when we're in it. We're expecting it to continue and it really just cannot move like we're expecting. But our overall bias might still be, for example, to retest a previous low over here or a continuation move down. But by not going at that first do or die point with the time congestion that is very similar to previous corrections, we need to wait. Because if this were to try to break down at like a midway point, that's going to be higher risk. If it goes more than double and tries to break down over here, for example, that's also going to be higher risk. As I go through all of these types of time development that we look at, you're going to start to see that it's never just one thing that I'm watching. It's never just the periods of congestion. I'm also going to be looking at other aspects of time development. This chart is one that I pulled from a trade here. Uh, I believe it was last week or so. And uh, what we're looking at was a breakdown where we had a two wave correction and then we had the continuation. And then I was looking for this to continue to a low point, a little bit lower, but instead of going and hitting that same development, as far as the time development went, it started to creep down and we started to get that shift in momentum. So it basically broke apart each of these previous levels of congestion here, leading to the continuation on the downside, which essentially ended up shifting momentum and leading to reversals. Now, what's really interesting is that some of these zones of congestion aren't what we would think of as just a nice two-wave corrective move. Sometimes they can be tilted where the congestion looks like this, but it takes the same amount of time as we would see in a previous one. And uh, sometimes they can be two periods that end up being tilted like that. And that's where we get more of that three wave versus a two wave uh, trend channel or trend development. So I'm actually going to come back to this chart. Um, I can't remember if this was when we had um, the uh, FOMC meeting or not. You can see that there was this big spike that took place over here. And this happens a lot with news, but you'll notice that overall, this is our primary impulse wave. It's very similar to the one we saw over here and over here. This one went with a halfway move. This one had that same amount of correction, but then doubled it out. So you're looking at the same idea over here, since each of those impulse moves, again, is about the same in terms of the size of, of each of these. So here and here, and then here and here, all of these impulse moves are taking about the same amount of time to move approximately the same price. So that is helping give us a better idea as to which way, you know, this is really going to break. We end up with our trend exhaustion here, and then the pivot coming out of that, that trend channel break there.
this is one that we see I think it was a right around a week or so ago it was maybe two weeks when we were coming off of the major low in the markets where we popped up with really strong momentum we hit resistance and then kind of pulled back down here uh let me grab the actual chart I'll show you where this was at on ninja trader so here is a one minute time frame and what we're looking at here was as this was coming off of the lows over here so you're looking at zones where we're coming off of these different lows in the market where we're really looking at things like the impulse moves again and how long the corrections have taken to allow for strong reversals. So when you're coming into a low, you can look at the larger impulse moves as well as the, the smaller ones to show us these trend exhaustion levels. And then we look for those smaller kind of measured time development levels as we're rounding off at the lows. When we have something that rounds off like this over here, where it has the strong impulse move and then we see it kind of tilted and we get a pop up out of that channel and then a move back down into the channel that's usually a pretty good zone for picking up new trades and looking for a new directional bias so the chart that we have up here on the powerpoint i believe was right in here and it was of course on that five minute time frame but what you'll notice is that we originally came out of the shift in momentum here, popped up and then ran into this longer base. So this was a position that I had been building early on uh, as we were going into um, overnight trading over here. And we were starting to see this really base out. I was looking originally for some moves in here on the upside, but it just couldn't get going. So what I needed to do to make a comparison was to go back and look at other periods of time where we had corrective action following the really strong impulse moves and how long would those corrections take. That gave me a basic idea of where to expect another potential continuation. So I wasn't getting them in the overnight trading very easily. So when something goes and gives you those two waves of correction, like here, had uh, the two waves, well, like this here, coming up, we had the two wave of correction in there, and it just couldn't get going. So what I then look for is basically just doubling out that time correction. So if this is your first two wave correction and you're just not getting your follow through like you're expecting, it might mean that your correction needs to double out. In this particular pattern here, we also have another type of time development that I'm going to get to here in a moment, where we will look at where the momentum originally starts to shift right there, where it pivots off of the lows, and then looking at those as measured time development levels as well. So as it comes to a point where B is equal to A, that's another major do or die point in the market that we can see nice continuation moves. As you'll notice here, as we were heading into the open in overnight trading, we did see another example of it trying to break at basically the halfway point again, but it still couldn't get going. So with the slower momentum, or if it does a momentum pop where the momentum is stronger than the move off of the lows, but it's stunted, then we also have that possibility of getting that secondary correction in here. So when we see these zones that do have the longer periods, I might still look for a continuation play when it's at the halfway point, but what that means for me from a risk perspective is that sometimes we can get these breaks that are coming at that halfway point but it could do a correction before it goes and doubles out and it can take out these previous lows so this is one zone where 
a trap is more possible. Yes, we have the nice rounded lows with the momentum starting to shift. So that gives it a better probability of success as a continuation play. But if we're looking at that time development on its own, it still had the possibility of trying to go into a longer period of congestion or correction before it fully took off. So time development aspect like this is just one of them. Let me go and switch my slide here. For those of you with questions, I will definitely um, be scrolling back through there and, and answering them here at the end of the session. So please go ahead and post them whenever you might have them come up. I know they're recording our session here today as well. So you'll also have the opportunity to go back and, and take notes. And whenever you're learning something new, I always encourage you to watch something at least three times because that is going to help it sink in so that you can start to see it when you're looking at the markets by yourself. And uh, here's another example where in this one, it shows us how we can have these failures coming out of these do or die points. So originally this was a play that was an inverse head and shoulders. And you'll see a number of different things here on this chart. I've got, you know, fib time extension. I've got some fib fans in here. I'm going to come back to those, but those are some of the other tools that I use for determining the time development that I am uh, focused on in the market. So with an inverse head and shoulders, this is that zone of congestion that we're seeing with that left shoulder, which is also very comparable to the same amount of time that we saw earlier after a strong little burst of downside. I don't remember what this was doing over here, but it, it's possible that this could have been uh, doubling out over there as well and done a continuation with a two-wave shift in the channel here like that. So coming off of an inverse head and shoulders, and we see a lot of reversal patterns intraday, and especially since volatility has increased over the course of the last couple of, I guess the last month or so, where we've kind of been chopping around a lot more in the market, we're seeing a lot more of these ratios happening as the market is shifting. So I like to look for right shoulders that take the same amount of time as our left shoulder. So getting that period of congestion or corrective move. Now, I also tend to focus more on two wave movement. So if this was going to go with a third wave on the upside, I would have wanted to have seen it confirming somewhere right around here where we would end up with that one to one and then see a continuation, preferably not breaking that trend line there. Since it does break the trend line though, that shifts my thinking in terms of the trend development. So instead of thinking, oh, well, I could get a third wave with that trend, I'm now thinking, okay, two waves up and now I need two wave of correction again. And that would give me the time for another possible breakout. So that initial zone of correction here in yellow, has an attempt to break higher, but even though the breakout momentum is really strong, it's still shorter than the overall two waves of upside. So since it is coming from the lower half of this upside move to try to push through those previous highs, it's also very difficult to break those previous highs with one wave of correction. What we like to see is that if something is pulling back more than halfway, it will have a second level of correction before continuing. And if it doesn't, then that break of the previous highs could be a fake break and you could get another correction like that before it continues. Or you could even see something where it breaks the previous high, pulls back, breaks your previous low, and then goes and you end up with a megaphone for a continuation. So this zone here, and then leading to you know different levels of shifting momentum, that happens more when you have a single channel here that 
is pulling back at least 50% of your initial impulse move. So it also means that we ideally would prefer to see a second wave of correction before we'd go and try to take another continuation pattern on the upside. So some traders will think, hey, you know what, just, just buy the correction. It's already broken the previous high. Buy the correction and go ahead and, and play that trade. The problem is, is that sometimes you might get breaks to you know, new highs here, but it's harder for it to really continue with that same strength. It typically needs that other additional wave of correction before it can continue. So we can do something like this where it pops up, has kind of an early breakout at the halfway point, which could be equal to, you know, these smaller corrections here, but it might need that secondary correction like this before it fully continues. So as a person, you know, hoping to avoid traps, I know that I'm not always going to avoid taking or trading every single level that can have a trap but understanding this type of time development allows me to position myself and manage the trade in a way that I can be more aggressive and if things are starting to stall know that I can go ahead and take some of off of my position and just look for another level for a continuation play usually a clue that it's not going to make it to a stronger 100% extension on a breakout is if it gets stuck at about 50% of that previous impulse move. So for example, if we're looking at this move up here from lows and it's coming over here and we're trying to get a breakout, if you look at this entire upside move and you look at that 50% level, if it's getting stuck in that 50% zone, it's going to have a really hard time getting to the full 100% as easily without going into a longer correction to get there. So this type of early breakout, there's rules that we can use that we can employ uh, to help us with our trading. But the key idea and the key takeaway is that it's more likely to be a trap situation. Now, in this particular example, we're coming over here and we call this the do or die zone because now we're coming into that 100% time extension here. And what you want to see is that coming out of this, we have a strong impulse move. So the problem that we're running into is that within this pullback and this congestion zone in here, when it gets back up to that upper level, we aren't getting a break of the channel here. A lot of traders will watch for breaks of previous highs for confirmation. I use more of a break of the channel because what that does is it gives me a really tight entry level, usually before a lot of traders are, are already into it. And what it also does is it, allows me to have a really tight stop so that I can manage the position much easier. So in something like this, you're going to be watching for a breakout as it's coming into that period of time extension that's very similar to the previous correction over here. And that can also mean looking at levels where, hey, you know, this pullback here had a low at about this point in the, in the correction. So that similar level here is right about here. So I might be going ahead and taking a position based upon that smaller channel break, just coming off of the support down in here. So this entry right here is, is something that I often do if I like what's going on in the larger market. In this case, this wasn't something that I traded because of um, weaker bias in the overall market, but it's a zone where conceivably traders can often get into a position, especially since we had some other things you know, coming together here, like the Fib fan, which I'll, I'll get back to later in the class. So if I was in this though, and I'm not seeing it confirming by the time it gets to that time development, 
I'm not going to hold for a stop down here. I'm going to go ahead and get more aggressive and not be willing to give back what has you know pulled up up here. So in something like this, I might be more likely to take a scratch and a scratch trade on it because it is not giving me the confirmation where it should be giving me that confirmation. If we look at this chart, you're going to see another example of time development that I use. And this one has to do with looking at these periods of time between highs or between lows. So the last type of time correction focused upon this move, the actual corrective move that was happening. And this type of time development is looking at the pivots between those periods of lows. We've seen this entire reversal pattern happening over and over and over again in the markets recently. And uh, I can pull up a chart later that shows you even today we had a good three or four examples of it where we get these shifts in the momentum where our corrections just aren't leading to really strong continuations anymore. And you're seeing things starting to turn around. And this zone, right as it breaks the channel, if it's just kind of hanging out in there, that can lead to a really nice breakdown that can reverse that overall larger trend there. So what I'm watching for is that between these two lows in this period of correction, I want to see those be approximately that same amount of time before it goes and breaks. And I want that confirmation by the time it gets to the 138.2% price or time extension there. So here it's setting up and it's confirming immediately. We've got that initial positive confirmation. So this is exactly what we would want to see on a breakdown. Usually what we want to see for the pivot high in here is that your pivot high is in this last kind of third of the congestion. So in this case, it's a little bit earlier, which means you're more likely to get a smaller inverse head and shoulders in here or smaller head and shoulders rather. Typically what we want to see you guys is that this starts to basically put a pivot here in that last third of the pullback. So you're watching that first type of time correction here and where that started to try to break down. And then you're taking that again. And that same zone is where we would look for that to begin to break down. So we can have a trigger point just when that smaller channel breaks. But we need the confirmation coming around that 100% extension. And on NinjaTrader, they use 200 as our um, level. So you're looking at from here to here to here. So this is technically the 100% extension of this level, but they use uh, the marker 200% here. So if you come to Ninja Trader from another platform, you're going to notice that that difference there. And it doesn't really matter what the label is. The matter is how long is that actually taking to develop and extend there. If this pivot is too soon within this zone of congestion, one of the risks that we end up having is that it shifts the momentum. So you could end up with a correction here <laughs> that is really comparable to the correction over here and end up with it reversing. So where that pivot takes place in that pullback is also really important there. Here's another example. Here again, you can see you know, where it did the, the smaller head and shoulders because our pivot is right before that 61.8% uh, time extension. but the confirmation happens when it's right at the 100% here. So you're at the 100% time extension using a Fibonacci tool. And I'll pull up a chart here so that you guys can see where to add that in your NinjaTrader. 
So here's the MNQ, which is our micro NQ. So if we're looking at, say, a five second time frame in here, notice that we have a really nice reversal here that took place here into the close. And you can see that shift in the momentum that we were talking about earlier. Look at how each of those correction periods is almost exactly the same. And then over here, we end up with more of a tilted correction that went into basically two waves of correction here. So your spacing is like this. So this normally would have more of a pullback and you could get a secondary pullback there. It's just a little tilted in this case. So if we're looking at the breakout though, we would go and I'm gonna clear this. You're gonna go up to the little drawing tool right here and you're going to go to Fibonacci time extension. So what we wanna do here is in this case, this would be our first pivot high. This would be our second pivot high right here. Again, that's because this correction is tilted. So you've got those two smaller waves to it, just like what we saw in those earlier charts. And so with that tilted move, this is really the first pivot that is comparable to this when we flip it upside down. This is our second one. So here you can see this is the 61.8% time extension. And then you're getting the break in that channel right there, right after the 61.8, but it's offering the confirmation of the channel break as it's coming out of that level. So you wanna see that momentum really picking up again. Here, same time correction before we get the continuation as well. So really great examples that are, are really just taking what we saw in the last hour of trading here, going into the close today. And I'm gonna move this over because we're gonna come back to that. Here is uh, that level where I just kind of put this on, ignore this today. <laughs> Ninja Trader, I make my charts, or, um, my program earlier to submit it to their review department. So this was from uh, when I was creating this originally. But here you'll notice both of those types kind of working together here. And ideally we want that 61.8% level. So really that last third of your correction, that's where we would prefer that last pivot high to be if you have a correction that is going through price like this. So if it's a little bit early, you'll have a better chance that it could do a little head and shoulders to still try to work out, but it also can increase the risk that it doesn't really break down solidly and it can go and shift the market. So again, pay attention to where those pivot highs are taking place within that second correction here. So again, you're getting that continuation right at that one-to-one -one ratio between those lows. So this is one of those really core setups that traders can focus on. It isn't something that is more complex, like, you know, dealing with like a tilted correction or something like that. It's a really straightforward look at time development that really anybody can take it and add it to their screens and look at their patterns. Like it might be reversal strategies like what you're seeing here. These are patterns where both of these are called an avalanche and it can reply to these reversal strategies, but it can also re apply to continuation like a bull flag or a bear flag as well. Here, I want to show you this chart because this one shows us where it tries to break too early. So we originally get this really similar time development, but when it tries to go again, it breaks that channel at a halfway point. And this is a typical level that traders can get trapped. Like I said earlier, sometimes I'll go ahead and I'll take setups that only have that halfway zone, but 
I know that there's always the possibility it could do a second correction and create a megaphone before it continues, which would take out a stop if you placed it above this high. So it tells me to watch out with my trading, be more aggressive at managing profits. Don't be willing to give back as much on corrections and really have a good system in play for managing that trade. If it's a continuation like a bear flag, I might be keeping a pretty wide stop on the rest of my trade looking for, for example, that third leg down. But you've got to be prepared that this could take that entire amount of time that it did before. And this is the same amount of time over here. It's just that again, you're dealing with tilted corrections. And here again, tilted zone of correction. So perfect example of the risk of where a trap can take place. So if it does come back and you see that channel breaking again, and you're still within that downtrend channel there, that becomes a stronger setup than taking this as a short just on that pullback and sometimes this might look good because it might look like a nice two wave move it only looks like one wave here on this chart but in other situations it might look like a really nice two wave move or it might be basing right at the lows and so you get that breakout the other risk that you run into with a break that's at a halfway point like that is that it could go, let's just say it's a base. So you're thinking, oh, hey, it, it's breaking down out of the base. It could also go put in a measured move like this and then turn and flip strongly. So that pattern is something that we would call it 2B. And it would look like this. You've got the initial correction, it comes over, but it only has a halfway move and it breaks down. So instead of getting a full measured move there to 100% down, you've got to watch the measured move here to here for support instead and be willing to go ahead and protect part of your position at that level instead of trying to go for that bigger 100%. We see that a lot at reversal lows in the market. Here's the third type of time development. So you saw this on a couple of the previous charts and um, even a degree of you know what I was showing you here coming off of our lows as well. So if we pulled up the one here from today, and I'm gonna remove this here. And we're looking at our time development then one of the things that we can do is not just looking at the distance between you know different uh, levels of highs for breaking so you know if this was an upside move and you were looking at two wave of correction for a continuation move again this pivot over here if it is in that last third would have a higher probability of continuing but that same time extension there that same time extension tool that can also be used where when your pivot is early you would have a higher probability instead of getting a head and shoulders forming so again where that pivot forms very very important so if we look at the action from today going into the closing bell what we would do is we would take the time extension in this case from where the momentum begins to shift to that low and then look at that extension zone over here so this becomes our main move down we started to see it shift here so this would be kind of the earliest or sorry the latest level that we would want to see the confirmation if we go to the earliest level then this is really where the that initial channel is going to break so our early set up for a head and shoulders can be here coming from that level 
this is one where when I'm breaking down these moves into kind of like a, an anatomical level, I'm referring to this as my leg. This is my ankle, midway is my knee, up here's my hip, and then this is my foot. So if you have this kind of ankle portion, then your maximum time extension is to go from the start of that ankle, which would give you a level over here for confirming. And then your tighter zone would be to go from where the foot really starts. And then that gives you your early zone. So your main zone here for a setup on something like an inverse head and shoulders, and in this case, we don't have that you know fully formed left shoulder, we've got it shifting down instead. But what we would be looking for is this zone right in here for the confirmation of those reversals. And uh, that's exactly what we had trading going into uh, the end of today's session. So it's just another variation of what we see here in the chart of DraftKings, uh, DKNG, on the daily time frame. Here's another example, and this just shows us the smaller inverse head and shoulders timing in here and how we can use that combined with the type of development for the distance between the lows. So that's your distance between the low zone, but then you also have that confirmation with the time development for the head and shoulder zone as well. So you've got multiple types of confirmation coming into play here. Here's one where you can see, you know, these really, they happen all over the place. This is an NQ chart um, on the 200 tick. And you can see that we've got them as reversal patterns and we've also got them as continuation patterns. But the nice thing that is a constant is looking at that time development. If you were to go and pull up a class on trading head and shoulders patterns, you're not gonna see this listed under any of those original kind of how-to <laughs> discussions. Like if you're Googling, how do you trade a head and shoulders pattern? You're not gonna see them talk about this, but it, it's really, really a crucial way to improve your risk parameters on the trade and to avoid getting trapped on these head and shoulders reversal strategies. So the other type of time development that I wanna cover today very briefly is our Fibonacci fan. Now, as you guys know, if you've been trading on, on NinjaTrader for a while, they don't have Fibonacci fans built into them. So I've gone and I've added uh, an indicator platform so that you can just plug right into NinjaTrader. Uh, we keep it really uh, cheap for you guys. Um, all of my education, I try to make it affordable for anyone to come in and learn. So you can add the uh, charting platform is called, or the, uh, the indicator platform is called uh, Trade Tracker Pro, and uh, we just make it available to you guys for $79. So you can get that to plug it in as well. And it's another type of time development that adds a really good confirmation. So what we're looking at here again is we're really putting the different types of time development into play here, where A and B are about the same. We've even got that inverse head and shoulders timing coming into play here. But you'll notice I've added a Fibonacci fan. This is just the very basic application of a Fib fan. We're going from the high to the low when this is an average momentum move. And when it is, we look for setups coming off of that 76.4% fan zone. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. I know some of you guys do have it, and I love Fibonacci. I don't actually use anything else for indicators anymore on my charts. I only use Fibonacci. So it's it's kind of interesting because I came into trading in, in the mid-1990s, and there wasn't much education out there at all all and of course all of the fancy tools and indicators that are around now didn't they weren't readily available but then you had maybe moving averages at that time but I come from a background uh 
in the arts and so Fibonacci was something <laughs> yes from Main Street so Fibonacci was something that I was already really familiar with and it, it's just a it basically is just a way of reading our human emotions as they're portrayed on these charts and when we are looking at breakdown setups if we get something that is happening before it's coming into like the 76.4 percent fan that can be another indication that hey this breakdown is too early and sometimes you might get a trigger that happens like right here and you're thinking oh it, it kind of is close enough but the fan has another bonus for us it can serve as a level for moving stop so instead of keeping a stop over this high when you're taking a breakdown we can continually trail that stop down along that fan with very high accuracy in terms of whether it keeps us in a winning trade or protects us from something that reverses so we might get a retest of the fan but if it breaks that fan the odds are going to be higher that it's ultimately going to keep going higher so it's a great level to use uh, as adjusting your stops too so that you don't have to be keeping as wide of stops as a position's really getting going here you can see that double confirmation as well here's another chart shows you the same thing and, and what do you guys notice here about our time we also have really comparable time corrections once again so that's coming into play and then you've got that little baby head and shoulders in there as well and that breakdown zone so here again you can see it hits it it might have taken out this previous high by like a few ticks it's kind of hard to see but it stays in that fan zone so we're able to keep a trailing stop above that level in the early stages while it's working itself out here's another one and uh, this is uh, another one that um, was recent that is a little bit different in that it has an initial impulse move and then a corrective move and then it goes to a slightly higher high and what i like to see on these is that as it pulls back i want your initial pivot of a correction ideally to be at the 61.8 or the 50 percent level there's some things that are way more specific that i don't have time to get into here in this particular class but coming into one of those zones gives us a really good level for predicting where that next low is most likely to hold and then look here again you've got that time development aspect where you're coming into um, that shifted inverse head and shoulders here as well so you're serving uh you're seeing this serve as support here as it's trying to round off and uh reverse on the upside Here is an example of how those FIB fans can also serve for additional types of trades. So if something is not going off of the FIB band and you're getting that right shoulder, for example, you're getting into the zone of the time development where it's great, but you see it breaks the fan before it manages to break the channel, that can help you avoid any false setup that might be taking place here and additionally that fan serves as resistance once it breaks so if you're looking for continuation move on the downside we will often see these fan levels break we'll get a nice two wave move back up into the fan and then we'll get a continuation on the downside oh thank you guys your feedback is awesome if you have time, I would love to hear what you would like to learn more about. So next time I am back, I can go into those in greater detail as well.
Here's just another example. This is kind of putting everything together. So you'll notice this was a trade that I had bought. It had a two wave correction and it was coming right off the fib fan when I was using this high to this high. What I was looking at was, hey, how much could it bounce, you know, coming off of a support level here with an inverse head and shoulders? This correction is actually only half of this. So our second correction in here is really, you know, kind of choppy. So here was it was much, you know, smoother. So this was my trigger point. But notice it can't get up off of that fib fan. It's just not letting go. So as I have my fan coming down, this hits 61.8. This is coming into 76.4, flips the trade. So it also, again, protects me from taking a loss on that trade because of how I'm using the FIB fans here. Here's another example. This is just putting them all together. And then this is one, again, from today's session that I threw in here at the end um, because I was looking at uh, the reversals coming off of these highs here into the afternoon. And so you can see here's a zone where it went into a double time correction where it's double this. That's the same amount of time here. My colors weren't very dark, but I get that same amount here right into that fib fan. Now, since this is above 50% retracement, it did mean I could have gotten a second correction in here before it continued. So I have to know to watch that. Where to put the fib fan, typically you're starting with the high and then you're going to the low as long as this is an average momentum move. I have a lot of tricks um, that have rules for how to make adjustments um, based upon different traits. So there's a lot more that can go into this. Um, actually, our day went really, really fast here. Our class went really fast. So I have a market timing master class uh, a trap timing master class and it's five hours that i did on demand uh, uh over the weekend live and it's now available on demand so it goes into the six types of time development not just the ones that we covered here but everything in much much more detail it talks about how the do or die points come together how i actually trade these patterns here, you know, where we're looking at for the confirmation on the continuation plays as well. Um, it shows some of my favorite strategies and then it gets into more details on timing for the fib bands. So normally you guys, you're going to find classes like this all over for $1,000, $3,000, whatever. Like I said, I like to keep my education manageable for the everyday person. I came into trading as an artist and from a field of archaeology. So I was pinching my pennies, you know, and learning can get very pricey. And there's a lot of false starts that many traders have as they're going into. So this is a platform uh, where I go into everything that you learned here today, but it's just in more detail. And then, of course, I also have the Fibonacci fans available. So you guys can use that as well. Let me take a couple of your questions here uh, before we wrap up. Do I have a trading room or live trading? I ran a trading room uh, basically 24 seven for about 12 years and I kind of got burnt out doing it. So now I just meet with my traders once a day at noon from 12 to one. And I every week I have one topic that I basically cover and we analyze the markets live so all of my traders get to see everything i'm doing but live and it really gets to sink in like that it's called league of traders and you can find that on, on tonyhanson.com let me scroll up through some of these other questions here yeah it is uh probably not on my main site for the, where can i find that fib van you can go to tonyhanson.com backslash ninja and that has the Trade Tracker Pro link. So the class that goes into everything in extreme detail is tonyhanson.com backslash traps. And that is the master class for the session that we did today. And it is about five hours long. Let me see here.
you also use Fibonacci. Thank you for the presentation today. Which product would I recommend to learn more? Well, <laughs> this one actually is, is um, a really, really good starting point here. And I would follow that up with my strategies class that goes into my favorite strategies. That class is more like 12 hours, <laughs> something like that. Um, it's just backslash strategies. You can email uh, my support team at help at tony.hansen.com too. And uh, they can help direct you in the right, right path for that too. How many time frames do I use per instrument? I've been using the 10 second, five minute, 200 tick charts. Well, um, these days, mostly I'm trading futures, um, everything from the indices to oil and gold. And for like the NQ, I use the 2000 tick intraday as like my my main strategies time frame. And then I'll, I'll drop down and after hours, I might get as small as a 10 tick or 20 tick chart just for timing my entries, but I'm always using the bigger time frames to try to give me uh, the overall direction to know, hey, is this something that can be held as a swing trade or something where it's more likely to trench throughout the entire session? Or is this something where the larger time frames don't really have a primary bias? Maybe they're in that trap zone and they haven't reached those do or die points yet on the bigger time frames, And so then that tells me, hey, I need to be doing more of the, the scalping type of mood, moves instead. Um, let's see here. Will this be archived? Yes, it will be. Ah, oh, thank you, Harvey. I do love to teach. And <laughs> no, I, it costs me money when I go to the expos. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Let me see, what have I missed? Yeah, you can hedge as well. And no, the product does not ma matter. Oh, thank you, David. <laughs> he tells you I've been around here for a while, huh? <laughs> I'm still learning, you guys. I mean, every every day in the market is a learning experience. You know, you're never really at an end point. And I think that's what keeps it engaging and, and fascinating is that it's kind of like um an ER doctor, I guess if you're you're working in the ER, sure you might see a couple of breaks coming in, but the breaks are always you know a little bit different. But you learn something every time, you know, every time you treat a fracture, you learn something. So um, hopefully we're not going to be taking you know many breaks like that. <laughs> Does the price include the indicator for Ninja Trader or Ninja Trader Eight? Um, so the class itself, the five hour class is a hundred, and then the um, Fibonacci tools are 79. So it's an add on. There's two different links for that. Let me put them in the room here to make it easier for you. So tonyhanson.com backslash traps is the master class. And then tonyhanson.com backslash ninja is the fib tools. <laughs> yes, Simon, they are recording it and uh, it should be available and sent out to participants. Usually they aim for Friday, but depending upon how busy Fridays are, it can take up to Monday for you to get it, but you'll definitely get a copy of it. Um. It is your first week of trading. Nice. I mean, if you're just coming into trading, you guys, the, the best thing that I can always tell you, somebody is just to make sure that you are starting out using the sim trading and doing that. I, I have my kiddo using, the, using them all the time. And then 
once you've really got to a point where you're building confidence in the tools that you're using, such as these time development aspects, at that point, start to go into the markets. And I always recommend starting off with three contracts. So thankfully, we have the micros now that allows traders to really come in and, you know, place things on the smaller time frame and keep their stops pretty tight. I know it can still, it can still be, you know, emotionally charged when you're first coming in. But with three contracts, what that does is that allows you to do trade management, where depending upon market conditions, you can continue to build into positions, but you can also take part of your profits off at initial resistance levels as you build the confidence to learn where you have a greater probability of getting a continuation of that same trend. So ideally, that is what I recommend as you're coming in. Um, with things like slippage, depending upon the time frame I'm on, I'm often using those FIB fans. So I'm really not giving them a whole lot of room under the fan for where my stop placement is. Um, but to show you an example quick, and I know my time is about out, so you guys let me know when I need to be cut off here. But um, oftentimes what I'm doing with my stop levels is if you see zones where you kind of see like these double taps of highs or lows, if I'm putting my stop under that level, I'm often waiting for that amount of time to pass in the stop. And that's usually when I'm looking at something that's based upon a stop, you know, coming down on like a pullback, for example, and I'm trading a reversal, then if this has like these little double tap levels, I'll add that little double tap and I'll put it under that zone and that will help prevent me from, from getting uh, pushed out easily. <laughs> First week alone. Uh, congratulations. Well, you're definitely free to come in and check us out over at the League of Traders and, and see what you think. We've got a lot of traders that have been there for years. There's tons of experience in there, but newcomers, you're also going to learn a lot. It's basically like being dumped in a foreign country <laughs> and learning the language um, from an immersion process. So I, I love to have like the, the classes and the courses that focus on like more specific aspects. It's just much easier. <laughs> yes, Dina is pretty new. You should get the recording in your email. Yes. Do I combine order flow with my strategy? No, I don't really pay too much attention to that. Um, I make adjustments based upon uh, the volatility in the market. I might need to go down to smaller time frames. Um, for newer traders, that might mean just staying away if the patterns are developing, you know, really, really fast. Uh, today, though, we had, you know, so many great reversal patterns that are really all similar um, to what I taught you. So, like, if you're looking at coming off of the highs up in here. If you're looking at this, you've got your timing for your head and shoulders. You got your correction for your right shoulder. You do have a little bit of perhaps an early break in here. Your fib fan, I would take it from here to here and that would give you your zone for your resistance there, just you know, just playing. This is a small five-second chart, but it's just showing you how those all come together. Volume also can be a really good thing when you're getting those corrections, getting like the the drop in volume. Well, all right, gang. I know I have to wrap this up here. <laughs> yeah, I don't use things like order flow. I used to. I got into trading back when it was, um, you know, people were using like level twos, and some people use dome. I, I don't really care for those. I just think that it is distracting, and it can create um, extra anxiety and and stress that's really not needed. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. All right, you guys. Well, 
I appreciate you taking time out of your trading day and uh, joining me for our presentation here. And I look forward to seeing you all again. All right. Thank you again, Tony, for taking the time to share with us today. If you enjoyed today's session, we hope you will join us in future webinars. We would like to remind you that the information provided was that of TonyHanson.com and not of NinjaTrader. All information was for educational purposes and should not be construed as trading advice. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we hope to see you in future webinars. Happy trading from all of us here at NinjaTrader.